Happy New Year, everyone. It says that I'm live. So uh, why don't you say hello? I see that there's quite a few people out there already. All right, so let's see who's out there. So I see Pam is out there. Oh, and I can hear it on my phone. That means it is working. I'm gonna mute that. All right, everybody, welcome. My name is Yvonne, and this is the Jelly Roll Club. Now, some of you guys are new, so you're wondering, what is the Jelly Roll Club? The Jelly Roll Club is an online or virtual sewing club, and we work together to uh, complete projects in a sew-along format. Um, the patterns and the project resources are posted on Facebook. They're also posted on this channel under the Community tab for those of you who don't have social media, and they're also posted on my website. So if you uh, have never been to the website, there's a lot of other goodies on there and all of the previous versions are also there. So if you look at the top, do you see that? It's like www.jellyrollclub.com. That is the website. That is also um, my email. So my email is Yvonne, I-V-O-N-N-E, at jellyrollclub.com. So if you ever need to get a hold of me, that's how you get in touch with me. But all of the information you need is on there. And then the other resources are usually the live streams where I share everything you need to know. All right, everybody, let's see who we've got out there. Oh, we've got quite a few people. See, let's see. We've got people from all over the place. Let's see. Canada, Oklahoma, uh, Virginia. Let me see. Uh, Washington, Tennessee. Say hello to everybody, Happy New Year, and tell people where you're from. We've got people from Ireland and all kinds of places, Missouri, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, and from Hungary. See, we've got international friends as well from Canada. So welcome, everybody. Um, I see somebody posted a lobster from Maine, my favorite food. All right, who is ready to get started? Let me talk about the Table Runner of the Month. So the Table Runner of the Month is a once a month live stream that I'm going to do all year long. And so what you're going to get every month is a different table runner and it's going to have a theme. Of course, this month is Black Tie Affair in honor of New Year's Eve. Um, I don't go to fancy black tie things on New Year's anymore, but I used to when I was young. And because it's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, the penguin was my inspiration for this particular project. All right, so let's get started. All right, for this project, and I'm going to switch my camera view so you can see what's going on, um, you're going to need the handout. So this handout is on the website. It's on www.jellyrollclub.com. I posted on December 22nd a cutting guide, and the cutting guide told you to cut 192 and a half inch squares from these Jelly Roll strips. You are going to have a couple of strips left over and you're going to want the wiggle room in case you make some boo-boos or in case you want to change a couple of the colors out. So I gave you a little bit of wiggle room there. Not a lot, but you have a little bit of wiggle room for mistakes. Then you have two yards of background and backing. In this case, I'm assuming that you're going to use uh, the same backing as you are background. If you don't want to do it that way, you can take that... Uh, yard that I asked you to cut lengthwise, right, the full length of the two yards um, by 20 inches, and you can save that for another table runner next month. So if you want to use a scrappy backing, or you just want to use plain muslin and not use up your nice fabric, you can save that backing for next month's uh, table runner and save yourself a little bit of money. The other thing I had on here, which is optional, was five jelly roll strips for a border, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then I had a, a visual on here for you of one of the possible layouts. So you're going to need to make, of the blocks that we're making today, 64 of the bow tie blocks. And if you're going to make it 60, uh, 64 inches long, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to follow this layout. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other things, but this is one just just one possibility. This is called uh, the hugs and kisses because it's X's and O's. If you look at that, it's an O and an X, an X and an O. So this one is called the hugs and kisses layout. But if you don't want a, a long table runner and you have a square table, 
you can use these blocks and make a 32 by 32. So 32 inches by 32 inches, you can make a great big square if you don't wanna do a rectangle, okay? So you can make this table runner as long or as short as you want it. If you don't need it to be 64 because your table is shorter, then make less blocks and chop some of those off, okay? All right, everybody, say hello to each other. This is like a support group for sewing. Um, nobody in here is trying to recover from their addiction to fabric. We're adding to that addiction. All right, this is what we have here. We have bonus content. Every month I'm gonna add something that's a bonus content. So it's either a placemat, a pillow, something that's cute that's like a bonus. And so this month we have Penny the Penguin. That's in honor of my little niece. Um, and so we call her Penny Pie. And so this little Penny the Penguin with his little bow tie is the bonus for this month. And I'm gonna be making placemats. I'm gonna put Penny on a background that is 12 by 18. So I'm gonna applique Penny on a background that's 12 by 18. And there's gonna be a whole separate video on how to make those placemats. And I'm gonna be working on that um, next week and I'm gonna post that as a pre-recorded video. So if you wanna look for Penny the Penguin next week, you can make those babies as well. All right, does anybody have any questions so far? All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that I had to do was cut a bazillion little squares I'm sorry about that, there was not a shortcut. Um, I used, for my background, I used this, uh, I call it snow fabric because as you can see, it looks like snow. And so these are my strips that I used for the background. I also did a variety of icy uh, blues. I did not use these two colors, however, these two teals that were originally in my pile because I just felt like they looked too much like summer. But I did use a variety of icy blues and I like how the table runner turned out. Okay. So once I, I picked all of my fabrics, then I started cutting because I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to make this block today. So this is our unit. And the unit that we're making today is a three-dimensional bow tie block. And look at that little bow tie. So it's kind of puffy in the middle and it literally looks like a little bow tie that's been tied and placed together. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. And let me talk to you about construction of the block and the steps that you need. Probably the most important thing that I, that I wanna talk to you about today is the needle size that you need for this project. I start with a fresh needle every time. Um, and so one of the needles that I recommend for this project is a top stitch or a sharps. And I use an 80-12. That's the size needle that I'm using. And the reason for this is because you're sewing a four patch that has that bow tie fabric in there. So you're actually gonna sew through six layers of fabric. And so it's important to have a good fresh needle that's gonna pierce through um, the fabric that you're gonna need. So that's important. Um, a handy tool to have but not required is a is little two and a half inch square templates. They make it easy to cut these little tiny squares, but any traditional quilting ruler will do. And if you needed to trace these out of cardboard because you don't have a rotary cutter and scissors, you can do that as well. So don't feel like you have to have a bunch of fancy tools to participate in any of our projects. I always teach you uh, free, easy, and cheap ways to do the same thing. All right, so the other thing that I'm gonna be um, talking to you about is an accurate quarter inch. Now in one of my Facebook uh, posts, I told people, and I'm turning on my second, my third camera, um, I told people that one of the things that would be helpful for you guys to have is a quarter inch foot. Yes, Shirley, I will be showing you that table runner in just a minute. So if your machine does not have a quarter inch foot, um, I just want to show you on my machine, I have put a little bit of that Wasi tape and then I have uh, some Cluck Cluck Sew tape that marks my center line, my quarter inch line, and then this is an, like an edge guide. So if you do not have a quarter inch foot with a side guide, make sure to, to measure accurately and mark that quarter inch because it's important for this particular project. And yes, I'm so excited that I have a third camera. 
All right, somebody said that they wanted uh, the link to, the, to print the pattern. Hang on one second and let me post that link for you really quick. Let me copy that and post that in the chat. And that is to the, I just posted the link for those of you who don't have the link to our website. And I'm going to pin it at the very top. That way you can find it. All right, friends. All right, so let me show you the table runner before we get started. And so I'm going to flip my camera to full view so you can see me. All right, everybody. So this is the table runner. And I'm going to stand up so you guys can see it. But this is a very long table runner, and it is precious. I did an alternate layout for mine. So can you guys see that? And so this is what it's going to look like on my table. Like I said, if I wanted to, can you guys see that? This is the snowball setting. Um, so if you guys want to, you guys can take um, and only sew this half like this and make a 32 inch square. So if you have a square table, you can make this 32 by 32. And so this is what my current table runner looks like. I've got it partially pressed and ready to um, start deciding whether I'm gonna add a border and how I'm gonna free motion quilt inside all of these snowballs. So what design I'm gonna use. I may do a snowflake in the center of each of those snowballs. Still thinking about it. So that is our table runner. And let me show you what it looks like up close. All right, so this is what our table runner is gonna look like, right? You're gonna have all these little bows. Let me stretch this out. So you can see these little bows will connect. And so you're, you're going to need a variety of fabrics that are lighter, medium, and dark. Because I think that that gives it some nice visual interest. So this is the table runner. Um, like I said, this is an alternative setting to what I put in the handout. This one is the snowball setting. So if you notice, this makes like a little snowball block. And so this is the completed table runner as far as the top part of it goes. So it's ready to be pressed, uh, pinned and quilted. And so I will be showing you guys uh, the finished product at the next uh, table runner. All right, let's talk about Penny. If you're gonna make Penny the Penguin, you're gonna trace her on fusible web. She doesn't need to be reversed, but you can get six pennies out of one fat quarter and you can even have a jelly roll strip. So my Penny's gonna be this black and white polka dot and then her bow tie is gonna be a red and white polka dot. And she is going to be sewn on top of this wintry fabric. And so Penny the Penguin is going to be black and white on top of this wintry batik. So I'm ready to finish her up. And I, like I said, this one will be a separate video that I will release next week for you guys. Uh, Angie, you may have an echo if you have more than one device. Let me make sure that I don't have too many microphones going on at one time. Give me just one second. It looks like the microphone on my second camera turned on and it's causing interference. Hang on a second. All right, I think I've got it taken care of. No more echo. It shouldn't have an echo now. <laughs> All right, everybody. So let's get started. Are you guys ready to make these blocks? They're not that complicated. So the dimensional bow tie, let me pull this down so you can see my hands good and close is gonna be made as follows. So step one, you're gonna to have to lay out five pieces of fabric. You're gonna need what I call knot fabric. Let me make sure these are two and a half inches and they are. Always double check when you see a little pile of squares, make sure they're all cut correct. So you're gonna need three of these, which I'm calling bow fabric so this is bow left bow right and this is the knot fabric if you want to look at my block for reference when i say the knot fabric i'm talking about this in the middle right this right here 
So we have one, two, three. The next one that you're going to need is you're going to need two background squares. So I'm just going to get two squares that are background, just like this. All right, so now I'm ready to get started to make my bow tie. All right, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to fold this knot fabric, this thing in the center, right, of your bow tie, and you're going to fold it in half, just like that. You're going to have those two raw edges touching, and you're going to crease it with your fingers, just like this. And you're going to end up with something that looks like that. The next thing that you're going to do, and I'm going to bring this even down even closer. Can you guys see that? Is you're going to take and we're going to layer this. So we're going to layer this in opposite order. So I'm going to go one like this and one like this, right? Because I want to layer this one first on top of the background, just like that. And I'm going to put, and I use batik so it doesn't matter, but make sure that they're right sides together, pretty sides touching, right? And so now I have these layered and I want them to be nice and even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a pin in there. And now I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch down this side. And it's important to have an accurate quarter inch. So I'm going to go over to my camera. And I, that's why I've got all of these markings everywhere because I want it to be an accurate quarter of an inch and I'm just going to sew it down the side. Like I said, oops, line it up carefully. And look what I just did. Don't get in a rush, people, like I just did because now it looks like I have an extra piece of fabric in there. And that happened to me a couple of times. So have your seam ripper handy when you're on live TV. All the mistakes come out, even uh, having to rip really quick. I'm gonna pull that out. And I have an extra piece of fabric. Look at there. I was wondering why that felt kind of thick. Back to the drawing board, right? Fold side to the bottom, cut sides to the top, layer that again, make sure it's nice and even, pop a little pin in there, and now I'm going to just use that pin to hold all my layers, and off we go. All right, now that I have this sewn like this, so this is step one, right? Put that little sandwich together. Now I'm gonna open this, and again, I have the little folded side to the bottom, so the little fold is to the inside, and the raw edges are to the top, and I'm gonna open this up like this. I'm just gonna give it a little crease just to get it out of the way. And by the way, if you're wondering, this fabric has been washed and pressed and not starched. Then I'm gonna take, and you see where this is on the bottom and this is on top? I'm gonna have to layer these now in the opposite order. I'm gonna put the blue fabric, which is the bow tie on the bottom, where this has white on the bottom. And I'm gonna move those out of the way and I'm gonna layer this right sides together on top and I'm gonna pop a pin in here. And the reason I pop a pin in there and I'm not a super pinner is because I wanna make sure that it is um, staying together. So raw edges are even. This is even over here on this side. Fold part is to the inside of the bow and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on this side and it should look like this weird little thing that I'm gonna show you. So this is, this is what it looks like from the other side, right? So it's trapped. And 
And so let me flip to the other camera. All right, so now that I have this little bit that's sewn over here and I have this inside kind of trapped, I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on this side. So I'm gonna sew on the outside of this square. And then I'm gonna stop and see if you have any questions, okay? All right. So now that I'm done with step two, right, step one was folding that little thing, I should have this thing that looks like a little pair of pants. Can you guys see that? So it looks like a little pair of pants like this. It has opposite colors, right? So it has a blue on this side facing a white and then it has a white facing a blue and it has the little bow tie fabric has a little opening. So it should look like this. You guys see that? <laughs> yeah, I, I will repeat it again, don't worry. And so the next thing that I'm going to do, now that I have this little, looks like a little weird pair of pants, is I'm going to pop my finger in the middle. And don't worry, friends, I took a bunch of photographs of me making this, so I will be posting a supplement with, with still pictures. And so now I'm going to take and I'm going to have these meet in the middle. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to flip one seam this direction to the left and one seam I'm going to take my finger in there and I'm going to crease it and it's going to be to the right and I'm going to stick both of my fingers in there and I'm going to have those seams kissing just like that can you guys see that those seams are nested is what that's called and those seams to just be really tight and snug together I'm going to pop a pin in the center right there just like that to hold that seam exactly together in the center. And so you'll have something that looks like this on either side. And so I'm just gonna take, and I have a little stiletto, which is just a little pokey thing on one side and this rounded on thing on the other, and I'm gonna stick it in there. And I'm gonna push that outward like that. I'm gonna make sure that it's even I'm gonna give it a little pinch, kind of finger crease it, lay the other one flat on top so that it's nice and straight, and then I'm gonna pin it on that side. Just like that. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna open it to make sure that my bow tie fabric is not all crinkly in there. And uh, you can do this with a, the back of a pen. It doesn't have to be this little stiletto but it helps to kind of open it and push it out to make sure that it's like this. I'm gonna stick my finger in there and crease it. And I'm gonna line it up just like that, even with those two edges. And sometimes you get little stray threads, just get rid of it. And then I'm gonna pop a pin in there. So I will have three pins on this little block and then I will straighten it up to make sure it's nice and straight because it's gonna wanna wobble on you like crazy. So you're just gonna wanna straighten that out because you've gotta sew that. If you notice with my finger, I'm gonna finger press it just like that and help it lay flat. So I'm gonna push my pins. I've got my pins there and now this little contraption is gonna get sewn together, okay? And so now I'm ready to sew a quarter inch seam. Very important that I have a nice accurate quarter inch seam all the way down. 
and I'm going to show you how I pull these pins. You're going to want to pull these pins in a specific order. I'm going to take this middle pin out before I sew because that will help it lay flat. And then I'll just make sure that these um, stay nested with my finger. So I'll just kind of lay my finger. So you're going to want to rotate this over. I added another couple of pins to this just in case, just to keep it straight. But this is one of those blocks where pinning is necessary. All right, seam down on this side, seam down on that side. So those seams are opposites. Push them together and let's go sewing, okay? Let me flip my camera so you can see what I'm doing with my fingers. So I'm gonna start this up here at the top and go slow, take your time. Make sure you have a nice sharp needle because that'll keep it from breaking. I'm gonna take that pin out and I'm just gonna go slow, making sure that's an accurate quarter inch seam that's good and straight. I stop right before my pin and I pull it. When I feel that it has stitched right through that fabric, then I pull the pin. And then um, I'm just gonna take my stiletto and make sure that my seams are straight and nested. And that's where the stiletto really helps you. So this little tool here because you don't wanna be sticking your fingers in there. And so what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that that fabric is feeding through and those seams are laying flat. Once that happens and you stitch through that middle, then you're just gonna take and sew the rest of the way. And this is uh, one method for constructing this block. All right, let's see, let's see if it worked. All right, are you ready? Voila! When I take this pin out, I should have a cute little dimensional bow tie block ready to press. All right, now I've got my little iron handy and let me show you how to iron this guy. Let's turn the iron on, that would be helpful. Um, if you have a small iron for this project, that works really, really great. But if you don't, don't worry. All right, so here's the pressing, right? Super important. You're going to take and you're going to give it a little tug, and then you're going to finger crease it on both sides like that. And that's going to help those seams to lay flat. Then you're going to take this one, and this seam is going to go that way and this seam is gonna go this way. So one is gonna go up and one is gonna go down because we're gonna reduce the bulk in the middle. So we're gonna take, and you can use a seam ripper for this or the little stiletto, and you're gonna poke in there and you're gonna push that stitching out of the way just a hair so that you can lay these flat. And this is called swirling the seam. If you ever sew four patches and you have a little fat seam in the middle, by spreading that seam out and making it a little square like that, it will help it to lay perfectly flat. So I'm gonna finger press it and I'm swirling those seams all the way around and now I'm gonna give it a press from the back. I'm not pressing from the front because in this case, those back seams are very important. I'm gonna give it a little press right there in the middle and it makes it lay nice and flat and I'm gonna press it in, uh, in order like this. I'm just gonna rotate it every time and just press it. And why do I wanna press it like that? Because I wanna make sure that my seams are nice and flat from the back, that way I can trim it from the front. Now this will happen from time to time. Do you see that one where it slipped out? It won't matter because nobody will notice that. So now I need to measure my block that it's done and I need to trim it four and a half inches square. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna measure it every direction in the middle. And that's four and a half inches to that white so that I'm good. And then I'm gonna measure it from the middle to the middle on the other side 
and that looks like it's four and a half inches and so that means that I am safe to trim this. Do I use steam? No, I do not. I do not use steam. I always just use a hot dry iron and the reason I do that is because I don't want to warp and distort my blocks. All right, so I'm using this ruler now to double check and that is four and a half inches and I'm going to flip it down the other central seam to see if that's four and a half inches and it is and so now I can just take this little sliver right here and I'm gonna straighten it out and I'm just gonna make sure that it's good and straight and I'm gonna give her a little tiny sliver trim and so you have to trim very little if your quarter inch seam is accurate there's gonna be very little trimming that one looks straight that one looks pretty straight and I'm just literally just sliver trimming a tiny tiny amount just to make sure that that side seam is straight and that's what I'm gonna do 64 times you're gonna put these together like this with a light and a dark and then you're gonna see, let me see if I have another color and then you're gonna put like this so you're gonna want to alternate them so that you have two light and mediums and then two darkers on either side and you're going to make these little units of four. So once you have four of these bow tie blocks, you're going to put four of them together like this if you're doing the snowball layout. Okay? So this block is super cute and that is one way of making it, right? So this is this is the fancy way. This is the fancy bow tie way. But if you're not comfortable with this because you're a new sewer and this one still needs to be pressed, then I'm going to show you an alternative construction method. So if you're new to sewing and you're like, mm, I'm not sure about this one and you're not sure that you can wrestle with these little pieces, I'm going to show you an alternative way to make the same exact block. And so what you're going to need is you're going to need the same amount that you had before. You're going to need two of background. and three of bow tie fabric. So you're gonna need three bow ties, two of background, and I'm gonna show you an alternative method that's uh, different than this one. So this is a, a yet another method for doing the bow tie block. So in this particular case, I'm gonna take these two and set them aside and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to cut it in uh, in half two directions. So I'm going to take and I'm going to cut one because two and a half uh, divided by two is one and a fourth. So I'm going to go one and a fourth right here. And if you're not sure, you can just fold it in half and see where that lands on your ruler. On mine, it's that white line, which I thought it was, but I was double checking. Double check people, it's better than to chop up your fabric and, and then cry later because it's wrong. All right, so I'm cutting this one in half. And I'm cutting this one in half again. And you're gonna have these little scraps that you can save um, for a scrappy border if you wanted to, I guess if you're doing it this direction. All right, so I'm gonna have two little squares, just like that that are one and a fourth by one and a fourth, and then two big squares, just like that. Does that make sense? And if my background is confusing, let me just lay this down here like this. Sometimes it's hard to see on that background. So I have two of these. This is my little Dollar Tree cutting mat, people. Never underestimate the Dollar Tree stuff. And so this is what I have now. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna fold them in half on the diagonal and I'm gonna finger press them just like that. And I'm gonna take and I'm gonna finger press it again just like that. And what that's gonna give me is a little teeny tiny triangle. I'm gonna lay that triangle inside there and I'm just gonna pin it down for a second. I'm going to take this little teeny teeny triangle 
and I'm going to pin it down flush, right, folded side to the inside. And I'm going to pin it in there for just a second. I'm going to take the color on top, and these are going to be identical units. And so now I have a little pin, and that triangle is in the corner. And I'm going to do this again, that triangle in the corner. And I'm going to come over to the machine. I've made two identical units, right? Background on the bottom, little triangle trapped inside. Let me make sure my fabric is going the correct direction. And that one is not. So I'm going to fix that. Double check yourself, friends, right? So now that I have it like this, I'm going to sew one quarter inch on each side over here. Let me flip my camera over so you can see. And like I said, I'm going to sew a fourth of an inch down that side. The little triangle is trapped inside there and I'm going to sew it. The same on both sides. Pull those pins out as you get there. Don't go fast, friends. This is not a speedy project. These can be assembly line sewn. All right. dangerous. Look what I'm doing. Don't do what I do. That's dangerous. Who else uses their rotary cutter in terrible ways other than me? <laughs> All right. So now you have this little guy that looks like this. Look, he has this little floppy triangle. You're going to take and you're going to finger crease him with the little triangle towards the background. The triangle um, has the, the folded edge to the inside, just like that. And so now it looks like this. See the little triangle? It looks like a little prairie point. And now I'm going to press it. So in this case, I will press before I go to my next step of construction. So I have these little flops right here. Yeah, my little fabric piece, thank you guys for answering that question, is a leader ender, and I do that to save on thread um, and to prevent me from having to um, ever break my thread on my machine. It just makes it easier when you sew the next piece not to get uh, sucked into your, your presser feet. And so look, I'm going to lay that as flat as I can. And I have now two pieces that look like this. You guys see that? Two identical pieces. Now I'm going to rotate these and I'm going to sew them together. Just like that. That's going to get trapped inside there. And guess what? When you quilt this, you're going to sew that down. So this is a different way of, uh, this is a different way of doing the dimensional bow tie block. Now somebody said, I'm worried that those loose pieces would get caught on the long arm. If you use a glide foot, Cheryl, like the little curved foot on your long arm, it won't. Um, if you're doing uh, top stitching, you're just going to come and top stitch down this way and down this way. So this is just an alternative method, right? You're going to take this right here. You're going to stab those together and it's going to look just like that. It's going to have those little flippy ends there. And you're just going to pin it in the middle right there and you're going to go to the sewing machine and sew across there. So like I said, this is a different method. This is just a different method. All right. 
open it, voila, you have a little bow tie block that is also a dimensional bow tie block, but for some viewers, it might be easier to do it that way. And then I'm gonna swirl my seam again. And so same thing, this is going down, this is going up. I wanna press my seam on these two sides, one going up, one going down. And I'm gonna take the same thing, I'm gonna take my little stiletto and just kinda of open it up so that this seam goes one direction and the seam goes the other direction. So just kind of Open that up so that you can flip those seams open and it just makes it easier. I just kind of barely push that aside. And so what that does is it enables that to lay flat. So I'm gonna take my finger, do you see that? It makes a tiny little four patch. And then I press it from the back. And that makes my block super, super flat. And it gets rid of all of the bulk. Now I'm gonna lay my iron on top from the front. And I push down. I know it looks like I'm scrubbing, but I, I try not to do that. And so there you have it. This is an alternative method for making the dimensional bow tie block. So you can either make them like this Or you can make them dimensional um, like this one right here that we just made. So you can choose. You're either going to make it like this so it has a little puffy bow tie or you can make them like this. But either way, um, you decide which method works for you. So this one is the easy method for beginners and this one is what I call your challenge method. So either way, you can do your blocks like this. They should all end up being four and a half inches. This one needs to be measured and trimmed. But once you finish your blocks four and a half inches, guess what? If you wanted to lay them all like uh, in little rows, if you didn't want to put them in that layout that I showed you, you could put them in little rows like this. And you can lay them all in rows going one direction. You could do, um, like I said, opposites. You could do X's and O's. So where you have it like this. Um, or you could do the snowball method. I'm gonna do the snowball method because it leaves me more space to quilt a design in the middle. So this is how I'm gonna do it. So play with a couple of scraps before, uh, before you get started. And like I said, these just need to be swirled. I need to press them flat. And that, friends, is two different ways to make your bow tie block. Lay them out wherever you want to on the table and let me show you some pictures. So I'm gonna pull up a couple of pictures so you guys can see. Um, let me pull them up from my computer. And you guys will be able to see what it looks like. Let me pull this up. Here we go. Can you guys see that? I have a picture and I'm gonna make it big. So this is, the, this is an, a third method. So if you are new to sewing and you want a third method for sewing, you can also do what are called easy corners if you don't wanna fold them in half. So this is even a third method. Um, it said, I like the puffy challenge one. So let me answer these questions and let me delete that image here. So let me go back to the questions. And so does anybody have any questions today? Let me see. Um, the second method is certainly easier than the first. Let me see what other questions we have. Um, it says, no points with the puffy center, that's right. If you do the puffy center, there are no points to match. 
So that is the, that is the benefit. So the benefit of this one is there's no points to match. Um, but how do you handle this when you're quilting? Um, my suggestion to you is if you're going to send it to a long armor, you may want to take these little um, guys right here and you may want to take an Elmer's glue stick and glue those down. And so that's one of the things that you can do to make it just easier is you can take a little bit of glue, like a washable glue stick, and you can take a little bit, you can just tack it right along that edge right there. Press it down, hit it with the iron and let it dry. And what that'll do is that'll keep those from flipping up, right? And so I'm taking just that. Like I said, you can take a little bit. You can use the little skinny glue stick or a needle nose applicator, which I have like a little needle nose applicator. And this is just diluted washable school glue. And then you can just take some and put it in there. And so by putting a little bit of tiny, a tiny bit of glue on those edges, and then you hit that with the iron. It completely dries that glue. And guess what? When you quilt and wash it, it won't hurt a thing. Those will, um, that washable glue won't damage any, any of your quilt. And so now I have these, so where they're, they're stuck, right? And you can do the same thing with these two little guys. You can just take a little bit of glue, tiny bit of glue right there, press it, a tiny bit of glue right there and press it. And it makes these perfect little dimensional blocks. So you can tack those down, you can glue them down, um, or you can simply use your stiletto and as you're um, using your walking foot, you can top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from those like that and echo quilt that. So that's another way of doing it. I'm gonna be doing this one with a walking foot first. So this is a walking foot if you don't have one and it just sews through many layers. And so I'm going to be sewing this along the, these edges and then I'm going to free motion quilt inside my snowballs, probably a snowflake design that I'm going to trace. And so I'm going to be taking this and see how these have all these little pockets. I'm going to be gluing all of those down and then I'm going to put a little design in the center. All right, there you have it, friends. That is the table runner of the month. For January, it's not hard. It just takes a lot of patience. If you're, if you're not familiar with this particular construction method, make 64 of these darling little blocks. Grab yourself uh, some fabric to make some matching placemats. Like I said, mine are going to be like this. You get six pennies out of one fat quarter. And then I'm using one yard of this snowy background to... Um, to make my little placemats because all of mine was polka dot. So this was polka dot. So that means that Penny's gonna be a polka dot. And so all of mine have little snowy polka dots. All right, friends, that's all for now. We have another table runner coming up um, the third Sunday of the month. So mark it down on your calendars. The third Sunday of the month is for all of these projects um, next month. We're gonna have less pieces to cut, so you're gonna be happy about that. And you only have three blocks set on point. So we're gonna set three blocks on point. They're gonna be cute little blocks. And it's, uh, it's another table runner that's 64 inches. And if you don't feel like making it 64, you can make it smaller. So I will see you guys again the third week of January. Let's see, that's January the 15th for the next table runner of the month called The Sweet Life. And you're going to like the sweet life. And uh, I hope you guys have a lot of fun making this table runner. Um, get in there. Enjoy yourself. Have a wonderful new year. My uh, word of the year is nourish. And so I'm going to nourish my mind and my body. And I'm going to uh, nourish my family. So I hope you guys have a wonderful year. You need um, half and half. Half of mine were um, the dark like this and half of mine were the light and the medium so I, I split mine half and half half of mine were like these lighter colors and half of mine were these darker colors 
but you guys have a wonderful day. Let me know if you have any questions. If you are new to this channel, please give us a like and a subscribe so that you get notified whenever I post stuff in the community tab. If you don't have social media, that's where I put all of your resources. I appreciate, I appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you guys will have fun making Black Tie Affair, and I will see you guys on January the 15th. All right, um, Joe, uh, I will have a supplemental instructions for you guys in the comment section of this video. When I turn this off, then I can post in the comment section and you guys will be able to see a pinned comment that has additional instructions for those of you guys who are new. All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful new year and I will see you guys on January the 15th. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.